overclocks that I use for my setup if you have a similar setup um, I found after tweaking with some settings that I can get the cores all six cores their frequency up to 4250 which is pretty solid I had it up to 4300 but it proved to be unstable but 4250 the way I have it now is pretty stable here it is in CPU Z the frequency it's gonna show it a little bit lower yeah 42 41.4 same thing Ryzen 5 3600 GTX 1660 Super. So I use Ryzen Master for the CPU. So that's the easiest way to do it. Easier than the BIOS. Um, and I use MSI Afterburner for the GPU. So in Ryzen Master for the CPU, I just went in the manual tab. And then I think under cores, you have to click CCD. And then there's like a red cog here that you gotta click until you get this green, what have you. And it just mirrors all the cores to whatever you change on one of them. So this is just what works for me, but I changed one to 4250. You can start off at like 4,000 and work your way up and it increments uh, 25. I think step size, yeah. The intervals are 25. Um, and my voltage, just because I have the stock cooler, I wanted to keep the voltage as low as possible because that's going to directly impact your temperatures, which you want to keep low because the processor performs better at lower temperatures. Um, so I was able to get mine down to 1.3. If you have an aftermarket cooler, you can add to your voltage but this is what i found worked for me with the stock cooler the wraith or i forget what it's called um and then the memory i tweaked as well uh, everybody's ram is going to be different i recommend using dram calculator for ryzen by one uh, osmus basically just enter in some basic info on your about your processor, whatever, and then you just calculate safe. And then these two middle columns are gonna be what you use. All those acronyms, whatever they mean, you can Google them individually, but you can go ahead and take those and enter them in one at a time. You can calculate safe values or fast values. I just do safe values. Right now I have everything on auto. I haven't really got to this yet, but that is something you can do if you want to get even more performance out of your processor because um, the RAM directly affects the performance of Ryzen processors um, is the way I understand it so that's just for your RAM um, but yeah 1.3 volts and 4250 every processor is going to be different so I hear so just again start at 4000 and work your way up in 25 size steps until you get to a point that when you apply and test, uh, I don't know why I'm pointing at my screen like y'all can see it, I'll just use my mouse, um, until it doesn't pass the stress test and then just go back down one. So that's pretty much it. You know, every time you change, I would recommend changing one thing at a time, apply and test. And if it passes, you can even this is what I use to benchmark the CPU to see if it is stable. Cinebench R20, it's free. You just click run and I would definitely monitor your temperature while it's running because I've had it once when I was just messing with things go up to like 90, 95, redlining my, PC, my CPU. Um, but if it gets too bad, I think it just automatically will close the program or even shut down your computer for you. All the safeguards to ensure that the processors don't just explode or melt in your computer. 
So this is good for benchmarking and checking for stability as you're changing things. And that's about it for the CPU. I think this was my latest score that I got that was stable on Cinebench R20 3730. I got it up to 3800, but it was uh, proved to be unstable. For the GPU, I used MSI Afterburner. It was a lot faster to overclock. Most people probably already know how to use this to overclock, but another free program. Just download MSI Afterburner. And once you have it, uh, you want to start with your core clock and you can just hit this button and then scan and it'll set your core clock automatically for my graphics card it set it to 120 automatically but I found I could push it up to 130 and it was still fine and stable and the memory you can add quite a bit I added a thousand megahertz on the memory and the core voltage here plus five percent and over here on the power limit just drag the slider all the way to the right and the temp limit is connected to the power limit so just drag that slider all the way to the side mine only goes to 108 and then you're gonna want to go into settings and change your fan speed since you're overclocking your GPU you want to keep it as cool as possible and then fan tab under settings predefined fan speed curve go to custom and if you want you can pause and make it look something like this I think default just has more of a bend to it I just deleted those points basically just a straighter line you know so it just however you want to do it um, and that's pretty much it GPU temperature never gets over 75 CPU temperature never gets over 75 when it's under a lot of stress and for my GPU the free benchmark that I use to test for stability and it uh it's pretty great the unigen superposition most people use unigen heaven i have that also but that one's a bit older this one uh you know on 1080p extreme i average like 27 frames because this is a mid-tier card on medium though i get like 70 or so frames but um yeah just type in unigen superposition benchmark and that's a great free one you just choose your preset and then run and then it will give you a score you can kind of tweak with things in MSI afterburner and then run the benchmark see if your score improves or declines so that's pretty much it I think everything is
Gas is closing on your position. Suggest you get moving. DZ Mark, stand by for deployment. Rearm and respawn. <laughs> Survive and you can redeploy. 
Just wait for your turn now. Be ready. <coughs> Turn to the front line, but if you lose, you're done here. <coughs> sort them out or capture the objective. Loadout drop on the way. Hey, I'm moving this way. Good deal. Be safe here. And that loadout. You've got gas inbound. Safe zone relocated. Enemy UAV on the 